Hey, Tony from Bikeberry here, and today we're going to cover a topic that, honestly, I'm kind of struggling on where do we even begin, <laughs> right? Uh, and the question that comes to me is, hey, what is the best engine for my situation? What is the best bike for my situation? What is the best bike and engine for my situation? So I think this is one of those topics that we need to cover in... Uh, engines first how about that so if we're just to look at engines first and really the performance of them and the the intended use of those engines then i think what we can is what we can do is whittle it down into maybe a few you know two or three or so categories of what will fit your situation now as you can see behind me i have you know, uh, two stroke over there. I got a two stroke, which that's going to be our performance, um, test, you know, that felt frame. It's a really good high quality felt frame. We're going to start with a basic engine and build it out as a basically a racing bike. Uh, but you could see, I have my old reliable here. You could see that I have, you know, the, the F zero with the hundred CC on it. And over there is the bullet train they all have a little bit different of a performance and a, um, you know, what I would say is a, a way that I want to use them and the way that I found I like using them the most. So after that kind of long introduction, let's roll. So to start out, we're not gonna go too deep in this part of it, but I believe it's the first thing that you need to ask yourself, what kind of bike should I use? What kind of bike do I like riding? What kind of bike do I, see as a build that I want to spend time with creating, right? Uh, to create the bike of my dreams, so to speak, right? So if you look at what the options are out there and then what most people gravitate towards, then I would say they gravitate towards beach cruisers, like the Swiss right here. So if you look at the Swiss cruise, uh, it's really the perfect steel frame. It's designed, you know, um, with the right proportions. Everything works out. If you look at our first series, the Build It Right series, then that's building a full bike all the way through, you know, as a first timer. And so that's a good basic place to start that'll help you cut the learning curve quite a bit. And you'll learn a lot of stuff faster than, you know, what most people do. Um, then the next thing is, is the tank in the frame, like the F-Zero, which is the felt faker style frame, where the benefits of that, you don't have to mount a tank, right? You have the tank built into it. Uh, it fits pretty much any engine. There are some things, it's a little bit tighter of an engine space in there because of the pet cock is towards the back, you know, towards the seat post. And I tend to run into that with the carburetor. So there's ways around that. Um, but do you want that kind of frame? Is that the look you're going for? Do you want a road bike or a mountain bike type build because you're gonna ride trails, you know? Uh, I see a lot of people doing this and making it their trail bike. So big like 29 inch tires and all that kind of stuff. So that's your first thing you need to answer is what kind of bike do I wanna use? What can I see me spending time with building and riding for the use that I have in mind? So mull those over and what you believe is the right fit for you. So let's talk about terrain. What kind of road or path are you gonna ride on? Okay, so if you look at my road out here, you know, it's a half a mile of decently paved country road, got some twists and turns, a couple of hills. Then I get out onto a main road, which is a much nicer road. Yeah, it's got some of the <laughs> sections in it where it's like thump, thump, thump. <laughs> uh, you know, like things like that that you have to deal with. Then I can go on other country roads, but then I can go to the park where it's nicely paved, but it's a lot of hills and it's a very much more varied uh, situation. And then there is ones that are just, if I go in the field back here, that are grass or dirt paths. So you have to consider all of those. What are you gonna ride the most? Are you gonna be a trail rider? Are you gonna be just a road? Are you gonna cruise around town in a small town? Are you gonna cruise in a bigger city? Uh, you're gonna do trails, that kind of thing. Look at your condition 
and how your engine's going to function in those conditions. So finally, we get to engines. Let's talk about the angle fire. So this is your basic 6680cc engine, bare bones, uh, nice quality engine at the heart of it with all the right hardware. So this is for those who are looking for a two stroke that I'm just gonna ride on the roads. Just gonna ride into town a little bit. Yeah, I may want to, you know, keep it running, pulling up to stop signs, pulling my clutch, you know, then pedal a little bit, roll the throttle back, pop the clutch, and I'm off and running again. Uh, I'm not gonna do a bunch of torque, you know, heavy riding on the paths or, you know, in the field or any trails or anything like that. I'm just gonna cruise in town and on the roads. Angle Fire is the perfect engine for you for this scenario. It'll perform well. You can add modifications to it if you want over time once you get used to, you know, running it, how it operates and everything. Um, that would be my suggestion for this engine. Is a great starter just for regular cruising around. It'll do you well. So let's talk about the next level up from that in performance. Of, I'm just going to ride in town. I'm going to ride on the main roads. I got some country roads. I may hit a gravel road. Uh, but that's pretty much it. But I want a little bit of oomph and a little bit of reliability behind it. That's where I would jump right to the stage four. Now, again, we have video I just put out on uh, all the differences in the stage engine kits, one, two, three, and four. Uh, but for me, if I was going to choose one, I would jump right to stage four. And the reason that is is because with this head, you get more cooling capability. You get the HP carb, which has automatic... Uh, choke, things like that that are convenience features that I really like. So for me in that scenario, I would jump right to the stage four because right out of the box, it has done nothing but be amazing for me and long lasting. Okay, now expanding on what we just talked about, some people may say, you know what? I want more reliability than what a two stroke offers. I know they're they're great and all, and but I, I'm having to work on them more than I want to. I still want to ride on the country roads or a small town road, you know, in, in a small town or, you know, those kind of situations, maybe a gravel road. What can I do? What kind of engine do I need that'll give me that, but with reliability? That's where we go into four-stroke. If you look at four-stroke engines... This is all of your yard equipment, <laughs> right? Uh, this is your lawnmowers, your riding lawnmowers and all of that. They're meant to run pretty continuously and not really have a problem. So let's look at our four stroke engine. Now you're not gonna get any of the performance and crazy top end speed uh, or tuning capabilities, expansion chambers and all of that. But if you just want a solid running ride we can't beat a four stroke there's people that are diehards over them <laughs> and they're like nope i just love the ease of it i can hop on it it starts i can go uh it runs it idles well it just does all of the things so for you who just want to ride like that four stroke is the answer and that's something we're going to get into this next year is a lot of four stroke installations so there is more torque for it. Obviously, riding lawnmowers use them, right? So there is more torque capability, so you could use these on trails, things like that. That's something we'll get into, and I'll give you a firsthand experience you know, from myself when we arrive at that point. But there's so many people who are in this category that are love them and wouldn't trade them for anything because of the reliability. So if you're looking for a uh, nice reliable engine that'll just keep cranking as you ride around and do your thing. You can even stop at the regular gas station because you're not having to mix oil or anything. Four stroke is your engine. So let's talk about something that I feel is a middle ground between your stage engine kit, two stroke, and your four stroke engine. That would be the BT100 here and also the bullet train which is a 80 cc engine, but it has a centrifugal clutch and a performance level very different, in my opinion, than any of the stage engine kits do. 
it just feels like on a different level. So I could see myself putting a bigger sprocket on the back and it actually doing pretty well on trails and things like that. I have bikes to, you know, that I'm going to leave them on. So we'll be able to do those tests in the future. So I'm speculating a little bit here, but from what I've written it, it's definitely bridging that gap. Now the 100cc engine, as I've said in other videos, feels like a broken in, well running uh, 80cc engine. Okay, again, there's not any modifications available to it, something we're working on uh, and we're talking about, but it has a clutch lever and it's something that I feel like, man, you could change the sprocket out in the back and I think it'd be a pretty good trail bike because <laughs> it has some oomph, it has some torque. Uh, these two I feel are kind of on par with one another and are something to consider. Do I want kind of the best of both worlds? Do I want to have a really good street riding bike, but then also hit the trails with it? I think the bullet train and the BT100 could be your answer. So I would definitely take a shot on ordering either one of them. Depends on what you want here. The differentiator would be, uh, do I want centrifugal clutch or do I want a manual clutch? Because that'll be takeoff and things like that, right? Centrifugal clutch is a little more cushy. <laughs> uh, but those are something to consider as bridging the gap between two stroke and four stroke, both great engines. So let's talk about the odd ducks on the site. That would be the lock and load friction drive four stroke engine. So this mounts right over the wheel. The gas tank is on it. Everything is on it. You just mount the engine right over the wheel. A little wheel rubs against your tire, which can be up to a three inch tire, and you roll the throttle back and it propels you forward. So it's something that I'll get in the future to play around with, but I think it's one of those things that if you mounted it solidly and you just wanted to cruise around, I bet it would do a pretty good job <laughs> uh, with minimal uh, mechanical effort. You know, you're really just focused on making sure it's mounted directly over the wheel and that it's not going to come off of there and that it gets good contact with your tire and you'll be rolling. So that one's an interesting one for those of you who want to try something that uh, is not a new idea. It's been around a while, but it's just fun. It's different. It's not making the whole bicycle a, you know, quote, motorcycle, right? The next one I want to talk about is the Beast, a 79cc four-stroke engine that is just a big monster. You know, some of the reviews on the site where a guy was like, yeah, it's like a real big motorcycle. <laughs> um, that one would be something that if you want some serious power, you get the Beast. So I haven't tried that one yet, but I can assume that it puts out a lot of torque and all that. So for you more serious trail riders, that's the one I would get. Uh, but even road riders, if you want to cruise and you're just riding the roads and the streets, uh, I bet it would be a performer. So again, those kind of engines don't really have modifications unless you're doing your own custom ones, but they, you get them, you put them on, you make them work really well, and uh, they probably run well for a long time. So yeah check those two out those are interesting i definitely will get those in in the new year and we'll give a test run that i'll give you my full insight and opinion on them well that's all the engines on the site and the different uses that i see if there's more that we need to expand on that please comment below you know subscribe to the channel like this video uh, and then yeah let me know below what your thoughts are and give me your situation where you lived i told you like what it's like where i live where do you live and then how can we uh make the right combination of parts engine bicycle <laughs> tires all of those things to fulfill your riding needs in your area so let me know below that would be awesome uh, then we can do future videos on expanding this so Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you understand which is a good fit for you and the engines and even the bicycles and all of that. Uh, thank you for being a part of the Bikeberry family. We appreciate you. Let's roll.